When Queen was released, she was crazy overpowered, and Jones spent a lot of time being the must pick comp in both ranked and competitive play. Ever since then, she hasn't really been as strong, since she had massive overhealth, a massive hitbox on her ult, and with that ult, an unblockable anti nade, at the time of course, before Kiriko. But even through some nerfs and adjustments, she's actually a very strong hero consistently. Let's take a deep look at what makes Queen strong, and how to exploit that to play her significantly better. If you're interested in improving further, make sure to take a look in the description below to get signed up for a Game Leap membership. It's got a massive amount of content already, and I personally will be making a super detailed guide on how to play Queen, covering key things like positioning, charging your ult and using it, and what you need to do to activate your win condition and carry your games. But for now, let's look at an overview of how to play Queen to a better potential. She's a super flexible tank despite having a pretty simple kit. Let's look at how to play Queen's neutral. What do you do at the start of the fight? How do you shoot? Who do you shoot? Half of your abilities, including your weapon, play at close range, and the other half play mid-range. Ironically, the shotgun is the one playing mid-range. Most of the time, you'll be spamming your shotgun at mid-range when the damage is effective, and looking for knives whenever you have it. Starting with Queen's Scattergun, to use it most effectively, you want to be jiggle peeking corners and focusing on enemies who are in your effective range. By jiggle peeking, you need to time your peeks with your shots. This is so that you're not peeking if you're not shooting, and aren't taking unnecessary damage. Only single shot characters can do this really effectively, like Cass or Junkrat. Orisa, for example, wants to swing wide and take an extensive fight. She wants to track people down with her projectiles. Use this peeking technique to get more consistent damage and reduce the damage that you take while you're in the fight. The second tip with your scattergun is prioritizing people who are in your effective range. Queen's scattergun is hitscan. It'll hit people pretty far away, so you can focus them down if they're low enough. But most of the time, you want to get maximum damage. You want to hit that fat 80 with every shot. It's what we call a meat shot. You want to get all of your pellets into the same target and play at that range to keep doing maximum damage. 10 to 15 meters is the golden zone for Queen to do really easy damage. Obviously when someone's close to you, you have a chance to weave in your melees and your slash, along with some fat headshots if you've got the aim for it. Remember to stay at this range when you're playing against other frontliners who have better cooldowns than you or are straight up better characters in the frontline. Orisa is really difficult for Queen to match at the start of the fight, but in the middle of the fight, she gets a massive advantage. The bleed starts activating and Orisa's cooldowns start running out. To wrap up her mid-range neutral, you want to be using your knives all the time. With such a short cooldown, just like Orisa's spear, you want to be throwing it out all the time, looking for picks or a displacement. Make sure to not always pull in your knife whenever you hit it as well. When you land a knife, you want to make sure you pull them into a shotgun blast or a carnage axe slash, so don't treat the knife like a hog hook, throwing it in and reeling it in all in the same go. This is especially important if you hit the knife on a mobile target who can't cleanse it, like Genji or Winston. It's important to hold your pull for as long as possible while you and the rest of your team try to force their movement cooldown and then pull them back when they try to escape. This is perfect for Winston. It's really difficult to be stuck with the knife on Winston and have it in you while you're in the fight. You basically can't jump out until the knife runs out. And the knife takes 3 seconds to run out naturally. You can do a lot of damage in 3 seconds, especially with your team helping you. Remember that if you're looking for a knife to pull someone off high ground, it's probably best to reel it in immediately. But for every other situation, in the middle of the fight, you want to hold it for a while so you can combo it with your slash. Now we're moving into the brawl phase. This is where your shout and your carnage help you get into the fight and finish it fast. Tying into the knife, your knife is really important to get people into your range so you can start looking for your shout or your slash. And one of the best combos is your knife and your axe. If you have your slash ready to go and you hit a knife on someone close to you, charge up your slash just for a small moment, a little less than half a second before calling back your knife and hitting them with a perfect slash as they land at your feet. One of the reasons this is a good combo is that Queen's Slash is generally hard to hit. Since it has a long windup, every tank will look to block it or kite it, and anyone with a boop will look to displace you. Because your axe cooldown gets reduced by 2 seconds for each person you hit, you want to make sure you hit at least one person. Trying to shout and slash 5 people at the start of the fight is usually going to lead to you not hitting anyone at all and then being out of position. So like the rest of Queen's kit, play safe and play patient. You have good damage and good spam, so there's no reason to run in immediately. You'll want to aggressively push with your headshots, with your scattergun, but hold onto your shout for the right moment. Don't be afraid to use the survive, especially when you get caught off guard, but try to play your positioning at a medium range, and then get ready to fall back when you start healing cooldowns start to activate. Any tank mobility, Bastion changing form, even a sonic arrow in the corner, it's all a sign for you to play slow and bait people in to then use your next combo, the shout into slash. I already mentioned how long Queen's axe windup is, so another way of making it stronger is by speeding it up, either with help from a Lucio or from your own passive shout. This is a big investment, using two cooldowns at once, but playing corners and baiting in the enemy team will make it really easy to lunge out and slash to apply the bleed and allow you to move your whole team up and overwhelm your enemies with damage and self-sustaining heals. 
So every time you're not pushing in with a shout, speed, Genji blade, everything, Kiri ult, anything you can imagine basically. You want to be baiting them in, because a way to get closer to the enemy is by making them get closer to you. And by playing around the objective, you can easily make this happen, since everyone has to go cap the point. Or stop it. So to summarize, with your shotgun and knife, you want to play mid-range, poking close players and looking to pull them in and combo them with your shotgun or axe. You can also play safe corners and dragging in the enemy by holding objectives, and then capitalize with your shout. These are all good passive plans, but aggressively, you'll want to combine your shout even with your knife to speed your team, and pull an enemy at the same time. Make sure you play with your team as well, using shout when you know they're close to you, and when your team is holding defensively, using the shout when an enemy gains it happens. But you'll want to go fast a lot of the time. Queen comp is one of the fastest comps in the game. No other tank can speed up their team. So when you do decide to go in, you're going in light speed. Just make sure that you find the moment and then go fast. Because going first is often really good, especially in ranked. Before we go into the ultimate and counters, you gotta learn the animation cancels for Queen. Queen shoots her shotgun shot at a rate of 1.33 shots every second. It's a bit more than one per second, but it's a pretty slow rate. So in between your shots is when you wanna use your abilities. Shoot into knife. Shoot into Slash. Both the knife and the Slash don't have a recovery period after you use them. This is compared to melee for example. Every character's quick melee, when you use it, you have a half second before you can shoot again. Neither the knife nor the axe have this recovery period. So when you're done with using them, when the knife comes out, when the slash hits, you can immediately start shooting again for a lot of damage per second. This also works while you're reloading. When you reload your gun, there's a period when the ammo is in the gun before you can shoot. That's when you can use your knife or even your slash. It's a really good timing to stay in the fight, especially if you're struggling to apply bleeds and stay alive in a nasty mid fight. Your melee works for this as well. Just remember that when you do melee, there is a recovery period that the knife and the ax don't have. Now onto the ultimate. Queen's ultimate used to be amazing, of course but now that it can get blocked and cleansed by a lot of things, it's a lot more difficult to pull off. But again, it's all about the same patience kit. If you lock in how to just play patient as queen and slow, waiting for your opportunity, or making it happen with your teamwork, which is less likely in ranked, it's the same thing for her ultimate. You've got to force out cooldowns first. Kiriko's cleanse is the first one, but even a lamp from BAP can do a lot of work in staving away the effective value of your ultimate. If there's a lamp to keep everyone alive, they can all focus on just killing you, the queen, when you've antied the entire team and run through them. Remember that shields from especially Ryan and Brig can block the line of sight of your ultimate and stop you from applying your bleed and damage. So when you're playing against Ryan or Brig and you want to anti them, you have to hit them head on. Try to aim your ultimate so it runs right through them so they can't spin their shield to block you. If you go to the side of them, they can easily track your path and block you completely. Most of the time, however, you want to be looking to hit as many people as you can, so your bleed stacks up really hard. Keep in mind that Queen's Rampage was changed. It no longer does 100 damage over time, but it does a 40 burst damage at the hit and then 60 over time. It still does the same amount of damage over the same amount of time, but you don't actually get any healing from the first 40 initial burst damage. This basically means that if you're using your ultimate at the end of a fight, you're not going to be doing a lot of healing even if you hit a lot of people until a little bit later. So if you're using your ultimate to try to clutch a fight, make sure you're not too low, especially at the start and even more so at the finish. If you end up behind the enemy team and your bleeding hasn't even kicked in and you're at 200 HP, you're likely to not be able to follow up on your bleed damage. The counters that you're going to be playing against are are pretty simple to deal with. Just like the rest of Queen's kit, it's all about playing slow and baiting out the cooldowns. Against Cassidy, he does a lot of damage to you just by headshotting you as you walk up. And of course, the Hinder Grenade can slow you down and cancel your entire ultimate. You really need to force his magnetic grenade out before you go for your ultimate. It's one of the silliest, but somehow still fair interactions of the game. The grenade is supposed to stop all mobility, and Queen's ult is some big mobility. And of course for Kiriko, her Suzu can cleanse both the effects of your normal bleed, if you for example hit a very good axe slash, or your ultimate's anti. On top of that, in a duel, she can do a lot of crazy headshots to you while you're struggling to get close to her to do maximum damage, cause she's so skinny. So if Kiriko's on a flank, look to focus her frontline so she has to come back and heal them. And if she's with your team, you can play your normal style of looking for knives to force someone to a bad position to force their cleanse and then go for a big ultimate or a big shout slash engage. Queen is one of the best tanks right now. Her damage is amazing and her self-sustain with her bleed and her shout, especially that helps her team as well, She's pretty well rounded. Keep in mind that knifing and slashing someone one shots 200 HP targets as long as they get no healing. Added to a melee, you almost don't need your shotgun to get kills. So make sure that when you do hit the knife on someone, you finish them off. You have a lot of damage to do so. 
So try it out for yourself and good luck in your games. Make sure to take a look in the description below to get signed up for a Game Leap membership. It's got a massive amount of content already and I personally will be making a super detailed guide on how to play Queen covering key things like positioning, charging your ult and using it, and what you need to do to activate your win condition and carry your games. But for now, let's look at an overview of how to play Queen to a better potential.